Well, as we make our way through life, some person or some experience will frequently leave footprints on the beaches of our memories. Oftentimes, these footprints are washed away. What? It's off. It's off. Up. Try it again. Try it again. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Uh, they can hear me, right? I think so. Okay. They, uh, these the footprints remain imprinted on our memories. These may not be footprints of a celebrity or a teacher or an important, important person, uh, those of a great historical or monumental experience. Sometimes they are just ex uh, uh, impressions left by a person we considered a friend at the time or even just an acquaintance. Um, such a person was a, a boyhood friend of mine who was a second grader when I first met him and he began walking the beaches of my memory. Uh, in the interest of his privacy and that others, I, I call him Eldon. Eldon lived about three blocks west of me on Hazel Avenue in a neighborhood that had predated my neighborhood by 20 or 30 years, although the homes in that area were older and some were a little dilapidated, but most were very fairly well maintained. Uh, Eldon lived uh, in a one floor home with his mother, father, and younger sister, Betty. Eldon's father was a coal hauler for the Lima Ice and Coal Company. Uh, I first met Eldon as he walked past my house on his way to Horace Mann Elementary School. I began walking with him uh, to and from school twice a day because we went home for our lunch. And uh, about two blocks west of Eldon's house on, on Hazel Avenue, dead ended into a, a large woods owned by a mix, Mr. Baxter. As we would walk and talk, Eldon told me of some of his expeditions and explorations into the woods. He soon had my curiosity up and got my eagerness to share his adventures up to a fevered pitch. One fall day, he asked me if I would like to go hickory nut hunting with him after school, and I eagerly responded that I'd love to go. We stopped at my house where I introduced Eldon to my mom and told her what we planned to do. I got her permission to go, and while I changed into my exploring and nut hunting clothes, uh, <laughs> Mom talked with Eldon and told him that she knew his father because he would occasionally deliver coal to our house. Mom gave me a cloth 10 pound sugar sack to carry store my, store my booty in. And uh, so we went to Eldon's house and I met his mother and waited on the front porch while he changed clothes. At this point, I must tell you that, that Eldon wore uh, round black horn rimmed glasses and looked just like the Harry Potter of today. <laughs> this was 65 years ago. Only, not only that, his mom wore identical black horn rimmed glasses and looked like what would have been Harry Potter's mother. <laughs> uh, well, off we went to Baxter's Woods. Better, better we climbed, huh? Okay. Better, we, 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 we climbed the gate and entered the enchanted forest. As we went along, Eldon pointed out the various trees. Hickory, walnut, beech, oak, birch, and the horse chestnut or the buckeye. <coughs> we had great nut hunting and filled our sacks with nice hulled hickory nuts, being careful to discard the ones that had uh, wormholes. This day was just the first of uh, many forays into the wonderland of Baxter's Woods. In addition to the nuts, we found bittersweet to take home to our moms. In the winter, uh, Eldon told me to bring my sled, and we went deep into the woods and came to an area near the Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, there was a big, large culvert there uh, and a nice sliding hill with a pond at the bottom. There was also a hobo's camp there where we would build a fire and, and roast potatoes in foil while we uh, sledded. I never saw Eldon much in summer, being busy with the boys in my neighborhood playing baseball, roller skating, and all the many things that grade school boys do. When the school year resumed in the fall, Eldon would start walking by and our friendship would take up where it had left off in the spring. Once in the fourth grade, Eldon didn't come by for a couple days. 
So I walked down to his house to see him. And I froze in my tracks when I saw a big black wreath by the front door. Back then when someone died, their body lay in state in the living room or the parlor for friends and relatives to pay their respects. The black wreath announced the wake of Eldon's mom who had had cancer and died. Eldon had never told me anything about it. Needless to say, my chum was markedly depressed and we would walk to school in silence. He never cried or said much, but I guess it helped just to have someone with whom to walk. In January, when the snows began to be heavy, Eldon and I formed a partnership to shovel snow from people's walks. I, I would knock on the door while Eldon would begin shoveling. I would negotiate a price, and then, and then we would clean the walks and split the fee. That's the first case of fee splitting in Allen County. <laughs> uh, off times, uh, we would go to a grocery store or a bakery after we'd finished shoveling for the day and reward ourselves. I noticed that Eldon would frequently spend everything he had earned that day. I asked him once why he didn't save some for a rainy day. It was then that he told me that his dad most often came home drunk, and if Eldon had any money, his dad would take it from him and buy more beer with it. So Eldon would spend it all beforehand. Is this water? Mm -hmm. Here. There. Uh, later, Eldon built himself a tree house beside his garage. Then he'd keep his money in a tobacco can in the treehouse because his dad wouldn't climb the, up to the treehouse. Uh, our friendship flourished throughout the grade school years, but when we got to high school, we were on different tracks. He was in general studies course, and I was in the college prep course that my older brother had outlined for me. I, I gradually lost track of Eldon and uh, don't remember seeing him after graduation. When I was preparing to write this story, I called a friend who is our class historian and asked him if he knew about Eldon. And he said he could vaguely remember him and said that he would search his yearbooks and get back to me. I told him about the glasses. And when he called me back, he said that Harry Potter jumped right off the page at him <laughs> in a picture from 1943. He said that Eldon had joined the Navy, which may have been his way out of, the, out of the house, or it may have been the draft, I don't know. And he became an electrician's mate, moved to Illinois, married and had six children. Uh, I think he moved back in the Lima area, because if I'm not mistaken, one of his children, whom he named Murray, uh, met with, with son Rob, and uh, told him that we were all most relatives. Uh, at any rate, he, uh, Errol was uh, uh, reported deceased on our 25th class reunion, which would have made him about 43 or 44 years old. And so, as I said in the beginning, sometimes the footprints of memory are not washed away by the tides of time. The recent pictures of Harry Potter have been popular and have jogged my memory, reminded me of a chum who taught me many things. From Eldon, I learned how to identify the hickory, the walnut, beech, maple, and oak trees in Baxter's Woods. And from Eldon, I learned that life is not always fair. It's not fair for a 10-year-old boy to lose his mother and be forced to endure such harsh circumstances at home. I learned that not every kid is as lucky as I was to have a mom and dad and brothers and a sister who loved me. This was more effective than reading about it in a social studies book. And lastly, I learned that sometimes it helps just to walk with your friend in silence. That's it.